Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thanks to you guys um, sponsoring me and basically paying for my time to work on Inkscape and paying attention critically to the things that are most important to you. As you probably are aware, in the past year and a half or so, I've been deeply involved with doing the color management CMYK stuff for Inkscape. And uh, this is another update where I talk about some of the things that I've managed to get up to and some of the progress that we're making with the, in this particular week, the PDF work. And uh, yeah, it's all going really, really well. First of all, if you would want, if you would like to help sponsor me, I put links for the Kofi and the Patreon and the LibrePay in the description. Uh, please consider helping uh, basically make sure that I'm spending as much time as possible on Inkscape and uh, yeah, thank thank you for those who uh, already do. Firstly, it's been, I would say, a good two weeks since I made the last video. And uh, let's just talk about some of the features that are currently available in the um, development branch. So I basically have a separate version of Inkscape that where all of these new features are. And it does shapes with fill rules transforms, strokes, strokes with tra transparencies, paint orders, gradients, mesh gradients, which I'm very excited about. We've got gradient transparencies. We've got markers. We've got markers in reverse. We've got markers colored by context. We've got markers colored by gradients. We've got patterns. We've got masking. We've got uh, blend modes. We've got clipping paths. We've got symbols and clones with inherited styles. We've got uh, rasters, mostly, We've got page bleeds, margins, page labels. We've got document metadata. We've got optional content groups, which I'm sure there's a few people who watch these videos that'll be happy about those. We've got the CMYK. We've got the RGB. We've got the color managed ICC profiles. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that are still yet to do. Um, the big one is text. I'm leaving text to the end uh, because it can be a quite a complicated um, system. And a lot of the tests that I've made to test different aspects of tests have to go through things like, you know, loading fonts, different font styles like bold, italic, um, different ways of producing fonts, different ways of transforming them, lots of kerning options, uh, line sp spacing, and then things like uh, right to left, left to right, whether you're writing in Arabic with diacritics, whether you're writing in Hebrew, things like uh, uh, top down right writing when it comes to Chinese and J Jap Japanese making sure that those characters work correctly because you need you know proper UTF-16 support. So I've made sure to pad the test with lots of different ways in which we want to represent text in the PDF file and making sure that we keep it as text. Um, it's the last fallback to basically have to render the text out as a path. And what you really want is you want it to be accessible and readable um, by like uh, screen re re readers and things. And the only way to do that is to make sure that you keep it as text in the PDF. Um, I say I don't know how com complicated it's going to be because honestly, some of the things that I mentioned previously about the features that we've already done, some of these things were very complicated, like gradients, especially transparencies in great gradients. And then other things were kind of easy. Uh, once I'd architected the way that um, rendering happened within with IDs, uh, telling it to render a pattern out with a specific ID was actually fairly easy. And um, maybe I'd just gotten the hang of how the P P P P PDF guys were thinking about things. But honestly, some, some things just seem to fit right in. And other things are proving to be much more difficult depending upon what they are and how compatible they are with SVG. Some other things, uh, annotations, uh, page links. There's some complexity the between with my upstream PDF not not supporting annotation links. Um, there's a current bug in the marker cache which shows the same marker co co color. Uh, I think I know the fix for that. There's a big hole where the raster support for CMYK JPEG should be. Uh, that this is also an upstream problem. It's basically Capy PDF doesn't support uh, those raster for formats yet. Uh, including TIFF files with ICC pro profiles and things, but they are in the test suite. They're just empty pages right now because they don't do anything. Um, her lines uh, need to be supported. I need to somehow get the clipping paths fill rule to work correctly. The clipping paths should work most of the time, but I expect a bug there. 
Uh, there's document level color space spaces. This is missing because Inkscape itself doesn't have this feature yet, but it is on my to-do list because I have to basically do all the user in interface work uh, for color management anyway. So that'll be part, part of that. Uh, I need to turn on stream compression. Currently it's all in debug mode. I have to uh, refactor it and remove unnecessary transparency groups. Currently it, it's working very well, but it's very inefficient. It produces very large PDFs. So there's some architectural work to do, so make sure that it's producing more efficient PDFs. And uh, the filters or the removal thereof, I've done a bunch of research into fil filters, seeing if there's any way of getting them into PDF and what things like Adobe Illustrator does. Everybody's rasterizing them, so it's basically just rasterizing the filters away. What I want to be able to do, though, is I don't just want a checkbox that says rasterize these filters. I think that that's a lazy way of doing it. I'm going to come up with a design which is a sort of like prepare your document for print or something similar and it will tell you these objects have fil filters on them what do you want to do so you can choose to remove the, the filters or uh, rasterize them or maybe if um if there's time at some point in the future one of the amazing things that i would love to be able to do is turn certain things like drop shadows and blurring into a uh, mesh gradient creation i think there is a trick there to be able to actually generate some of these things in 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 vectors um, certain other things might not be possible it just depends um then there's things the, the sort of sort of stretch goals, things like embedding the SVG inside of the PDF file, so that if you open the PDF file again in Inkscape, uh, Inkscape can see the SVG and just read that instead, so to retain a lot of the editing information. That's what Adobe Illustrator does, uh, except not with SVG files. So there's stuff like that uh, that's on the horizon uh, that I'd love to be able to get get to. Okay, so that's all of the exciting PDF news. You can see how close we're getting to having a sort of um, usable PDF. What I expect to happen is, is that I'm going to end up with uh, the tech support completed and then I'm going to make a release. I want you to tell me if I should make an alpha sort of version of this branch available to my sponsors first or whether I should make it available to everybody. Uh, let me know. Um, I'm in two minds about the reasons why, like because people who test it are going to see uh, an extremely alpha version of Inkscape, and they're going to find a lot of bugs for me. Um, but they'll also be the first ones to get hold of an Inkscape that can actually produce CMYK PDFs. So, you know. Uh, okay, let's talk about some of the things going on in the rest of Inkscape. Um, PBS manages uh, can continues to work on their multiple um, tabbed visualizations basically having uh, multiple graphics open in Inkscape with tabs instead of separate windows vibe have Thomas and Carol R have been working to fix bugs uh, a lot of those are backport proposed into 1.4.1 1, 1 great work and I wanted to give a shout out to Aaron Fanes uh, who's added a few fi fixes into Inkscape welcome to the community and, uh, and that's about it. Uh, things generally slow down. Oh, I should mention, uh, Jonathan has created a um, physical event for February for Inkscape developers to join up and um, do, we used to call them hackfests. What, what do we call them now? Um, meetings, I guess. Community, it's a community event where we get to come together, talk about things, maybe do some work together. Uh, that'll be in Germany, I think, and the project is kindly sponsoring uh, contributors, members to um, for travel and um, hotel expenses. Okay, so that's about it for now. Uh, this will probably be the last video before the New Year's because I want to give myself some space for the holidays and also be able to work on the tax stuff and hopefully give you an update with results, but we'll find out. Uh, thank you for watching all of these update videos, and I will see you next year.